Hey, yo, what's good, man? It's your host, Cleve. Welcome to the Third Coast Podcast with my man. Joe, what it do, Gators? What it do, man? It's your host, Cleve. It's your host, Cleve. Third Coast Podcast. Third Coast Podcast. Joe, what it do, Welcome to Third Coast Podcast with your host Cleve and my man Gator. What it do, man? Another beautiful day, I guess. Um, how are you, homie? Man, I'm doing pretty good. I can't complain. Just uh, combating with this, you know, what's more than present, this unbearable heat wave that we've been dealing with, with uh, triple digit for the Fahrenheit and you know, for the listeners out of the country, you know, we've been dealing with anywhere between 38 degrees Celsius to 42 degrees Celsius, which is here in conversions. We have been dealing with about 98 degrees to 110, 112. Yeah, yeah so uh, it's, it's definitely working and taking a toll on the brain whenever it comes to sitting down with you guys on these episodes and giving you process thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> so uh if we have a little bit of gap here in the uh well before leading up to fet it's just because we're taking a break from the heat but uh just know we're still grinding we're still gonna get episodes out and we're gonna keep rolling like we are on this beautiful sunday uh afternoon and cleave i just want this is my new personal conspiracy okay and this is not founded on any information at all this is just founded on my general thinking all right. So, this is a conspiracy totally made up by me, too. And so, you I were just, just, like, sitting, before I ask you, like, you were just, like, sitting around and you was just thinking, group, connecting some dots? Yeah, the uh, gears are grinding up there. Okay, so, here recently, it does involve the heat. Have you noticed when you're, like, outside in the afternoon and you're looking at your phone and it's saying, oh, it's 106 or it's, like, 98 degrees and the sun's down, Right. Right. So it brought me to my thinking, you know how like news companies embell over embellish the news to make it something a lot more than what it really is to draw in numbers, viewers and stuff like that. Right. I think that they're over embellishing the weather. In a sense. No now I'm now this is this I'm is listening. just this is just my theory. So what did I base this theory off of is okay, it feels cooler than what it's saying it is on the phone you know what i'm saying like what they're giving us that information so i bought a mercury therm uh mercury thermometer that goes outside right right so i get an actual reading of the temperature that my phone is alleged saying it's this temperature but i'm getting an actual reading from this location so i'm thinking either they generalize like say you're in oakdale they just give a general weather uh, thing for Oakdale but I gauged it last night and it was like 6 degrees say about like 9 o'clock my thermostat was 6 degrees cooler than what my phone was telling me and then like during the heat of the day it was about 2.5 degrees off now that can just be happenstance or whatever or I could be getting raided by the CIA tomorrow you know but <laughs> <laughs> or the who or the weather the what's it uh, the National Weather Service yeah, is going to be weather. kicking down the door get on the ground gate are you gator what it do it's him <laughs> it's him get him you fucking are numbers <laughs> up gator but I don't know it's just I don't know one or two little numbers can mean a lot that's a big the, difference yeah so consciously and, speaking I'm just keeping track of the weather at my house and just you know looking at my phone and just but it has been really hot you can't get away from that you know obviously the trees are starting to turn you know we ain't got rain in forever but it does bring me to another thing too which is it's not uncommon for the United States to have severe droughts and uh, you look at 1939 the Dust Bowl yeah it was eight was it eight to ten years it didn't fucking rain in like Missouri or something and it was killing everything and it was just 
and it was really hot too. Right. And uh, it's like it is now, you know, there's a heat dome over the Midwest. That's kind of like what's, you know, is it history really repeating itself? It, it's global warming doing it. What, you know, all it's like so much out information out there and you try to find like the right answer to it. Is it just hot because it's going to be hot? Is this the trending thing? Is El Nino just going to get worse? Is the ice caps really melting? Is this our global climate really going to change because at one point in time during like was it the jurassic period wasn't it like just it wasn't no ice caps or no shit like that it was just marshlands and the tundra was oh open yeah on you're the poles. talking about yeah the jurassic period that's like you're talking like 180 190 million years i wasn't there i wouldn't know i mean but <laughs> it was a very long amount of years a couple millions of years i don't know that's just where one of my weird grinding but it weird makes, thoughts. But yeah, that makes sense though, because it's like, like again, you you have a, a thermometer. I apologize. Oh no, you're good. I was just looking to make sure that but, we we're still recording. But yeah, it's like you have a thermometer at your house. You put it out in the sun, or I don't know if it's in direct sun or if it's like in the shade. In, but indirect is what it called, where it gets like sun at the hottest point of the day. Yeah, and then you know, as the sun sets, I think that's the right word for it. I looked at. I Googled it, so maybe. <laughs> right. So, I mean, if if you're talking like direct sun for this amount of hours, I could believe like on my phone, it, the degrees would read a little bit hotter because of the machine that it takes to read the yeah. device and the effects of what's taking place with the actual phenomena. I could see it being one or two degrees higher because what is being processed through right yeah. unless even if it even if it was a satellite read you would still be able to see cloud readings and conditions to everything that a meteorologist would need to you know kind of guide on the weather that's why a lot of the time you know you see people spending a lot of time looking at the clouds like if you yeah. know the right formations like you'll know like what what's going to be a cloudy sunny day versus a cloudy rainy day and that's like of course, common knowledge, you know, like elementary stuff, like when a cloud is gray, it has water. When a cloud is white, it's just, you know, from the different pressures, like high pressure areas, low pressure areas, you have these different formations. Speak, but, uh, speaking of media, uh, <clears throat> ah, butcher the word, look at me. Uh, <laughs> Miss Reed would be so proud. Uh, shout out to episode 20, is it 207? 207, I think. Um, 207 10 foot chickens see. with uh chuck uh we always appreciate chuck coming through and being on the mic uh the dude uh i don't know if since we you know we are in louisiana you know and our podcast is surrounded you remember when uh you know ben terry the dude that was the uh meteorologic i came I came meteorologist uh for kplc in uh lake charles when a uh, hurricane, what was the hurricane that came through that destroyed Lake Charles? So he, he, he like was one of the guys that covered it all, went through it and stuff like that. But here recently he had, uh, he just passed away of like some type of stomach cancer. And uh, for everybody, you know, that, that informs and puts information out there and saves life, that was an important job. He did a really good job at what he was doing and he helped a lot of people and uh yeah so r.i.p homie yeah r.i.p that's something you know a lot of people don't that's one thing when you do certain jobs you shouldn't you know you won't i mean obviously you're gonna get some respect you know police officers law enforcement uh army you know certain jobs come with a certain type of title or presentation but you know the thankless jobs and uh Stuff like he was doing every day, he probably was, it's raining again, it's hot again. But when it came time to come clutch and give good information, safety evacuations, up-to-date, 24-7 coverage, he was there and done that and probably saved a lot of people's lives. So, you know. Yeah, it's definitely a need for the efforts of, like, saving the lives of not just people but the animals, too. Yeah. It's like lately... um. Like lately, I, were, I haven't seen any honeybees this summer. Like I had some watermelon uh, on one of my breaks, and a honeybee yeah. literally flew up to me, and he landed on my watermelon. I was like, fuck it, you know, it's like the honeybee can have some of my watermelon, because why not, you know? It's bad enough that I also seen 
what allegedly could be a murder hornet, like one of the Asian hornets. That motherfucker was big as fuck and had a long yellow Why didn't and black you try tail. To, uh, capture it. They okay, so they have photographic memory. They're normally aggressive. If you don't kill it, it will remember your face, and not only it will remember your face, it will tell its colony about you, <laughs> everything that had happened, and then they're gonna come back in a swarm and Thank they will you. wait for weeks like they'll wait outside of your house for like days or weeks at a time waiting for that perfect moment to strike like if i'm not out the door and in my car within a certain window or amount of seconds with. it's over with they and they and when they sting they don't stop stinging and they do this by the by the hundreds if not the thousands are you gonna get that so uh, no i'm not trying to capture it it was on my neighbor's house so I was like, well, good luck to them because I'm not about to mess with it. Yeah. Like the thing was like big as like half of the size of my hand. Like the tail, like the tail of it was probably like, like four two five, inches. What, about four or five inches long? I wouldn't say like, well, the entire bug was probably about three to four inches. God it looks damn. like it looked pretty big. I made sure I was in the house and I made sure I ain't show my face. I was like, nah, I'm not getting stung. I got too much I need to accomplish before I get taken out by a, by a murder hornet. <laughs> yeah, fuck all of that. Yeah. Oh, bumped the mic. Look at me. I bumped the mic for a change. That's a damn shame. But uh, I have a few things. Uh, I would like to bring up on this episode. I know that uh, you we have been talking about like uh, you want to talk about like vitamins and like yeah, natural like, stuff. Uh, it's no time like the present if you want some vitamin D. We can start there because you can walk right outside right now and get plenty <laughs> of it. Get all the vitamin D you need. It's best to get the vitamin D bright and early, like between like six, seven o'clock in the morning, like when the sun is rising, when the sun. It got that like that nice glow. It's like that nice orange glow. That's the best time to get it, you know, without being burned or you know completely destroyed by UV rays. You know, like as of right now, where it's like what four in the afternoon, five in the afternoon, yeah. where it's like the peak of the heat. That's dangerous. That's not wise. It's not smart to try to get a healthy dose in such a large amount in a short amount of time. You know, that's. That's the kind of weather you step out in it, you smoke a cigarette, and then you go right back in the house because yeah. that's all you need. But yeah, bright and early in the morning, and then in the evening when the sun is set, that's the perfect time to get it. But that's just the common knowledge, you know, and then you got the vitamin C and the oranges. Yeah. But I digress. You have some things you wanted to bring up, the topic? Oh, yeah. Uh, so if... You ain't heard yet, Cleve. Echo has released a new alcoholic beverage intended to be paired with its popular waffles. The popular frozen waffle company is partnering with the Gatlingburg, Tennessee-based Sugarland Distilling Company to launch its new Echo Brunch in a Jar Sipping Cream, a liqueur blended. The flavors of toasted Echo waffles, sweet maple syrup, and rich butter with a hint of smoky bacon, according to a new release. So, it's getting desperate out there, Cleve. Yep, maple, maple syrup, bacon, liqueur. Now, I could read the rest of this, but I'm just going to go ahead, before I even dive into some of this, um, that's a big no for me. Um, I ain't a big ego fan, because if I want breakfast, I want pancakes and peanut butter and syrup or waffles peanut butter and syrup so i ain't an ego person at all i don't like don't like them never have and then but now, they say it for brunch yeah so it's not just breakfast but it's lunch too so i guess I, if you say it's for brunch it makes it less so it's like chicken and waffles chickens waffles and then you got a cream liqueur for your drink which is like a milky alcoholic <laughs> it's kind of it kind of makes me think of like um What's that like the mud slide or yeah. the the uh, white Russian? Russian yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, I guess, but ego, but ego flavored. And then I don't know. And then butter. Make, it seems like a lot. I bet you it's gonna be kind of like that uh, stuff we tried. Um, what's it called? It's like a rich those and creamy, twinkie those twinkie coffee drinks. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. a rich and creamy kind of 
I don't know if I could get down with that. Oh. <laughs> but you want me to... Uh... Oh, uh... So, between the juggle of consistently changing schedule, household errands, fam- uh, family outings, or a busy workday, it can often feel impossible for parents to find moments they can savor for themselves, said Joe. Uh, senior director of marketing of frozen foods. Oh, that ain't the. This is not me. This is some other Joe. Uh, Echo brunch and a jar makes it easy for parents to kick back when they're not caring for their little ones. So whenever parents want to pick up a weekend brunch or savor some of those classic brunch flavors during their downtime, this is a feel-good Echo-inspired liqueur. Is the perfect treat. Working with Echo to bring. Ego nog to life. <laughs> Hold up. Ego, they call it an ego nog. Ego nog to life. Uh, last inspired vision of our uh, sipping cream. The parents can enjoy year round, says Greg, master distillery at Sugarlands Distilling Company. Our distilling team crafted Eggo Brunch in a jar to combine flavors of toasted Eggo waffles, rich maple syrup, and notes of creamy butter with a sa- savory hint of bacon in each sip. Eggo Brunch in a jar is the perfect way to elevate weekend brunches with a fun cocktail or to enjoy a classic brunch flavor during your well-deserved me time in the evening. In the evening, they just said it was for brunch a while ago. Echo well, brunch. yeah, brunch is, you know, breakfast, lunch. So it could be in the evening, I guess. I mean, they, uh, they're all over the place. They just, <laughs> yeah, they just trying to get it out 24-7 whenever you wake up or whenever you're going to sleep. Get this Echo Brunch. Echo brunch, Echo brunch in a Jar uh, was made available at select stores nationwide beginning Tuesday, August the 15th. And, of course... The law says you gotta be twenty one or older to purchase it. <clears throat> the law the says law. But your mom breaking might the be, law, but your mom the might law. be like Okay <laughs> kids. Let <laughs> 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 me stop, bro. Imagine you come home and your mom was man, I had a little too much of that Happy juice. <laughs> that that ego nog. Um but I don't know, it's like every Everybody just wants to put their hand in everything now. Like ego, me personally, I think you should have stayed away from the uh, alcohol. I don't think it's a good look for your company because you're trying. You're trying to reach the adult. Like you, I get it. You want to get. You, that's like you're saying basically when you drop your kids off at school, come back and drink our ego nog. Yeah, that's basically <laughs> like whenever your kids eat our breakfast and the adults can have they share it Look, too. You, you feed your kids egos, you bring their little asses to school, you come home, and then you drink our ego nog. That's the only way you do it. You think that'd be a good advertisement pitch for their company? Nah, it wouldn't because <laughs> not only that, the kids would be getting into the ego <laughs> nog whenever they get in their breakfast. <laughs> Like mommy, I was looking for the I was looking for the syrup, and I saw this jar. It said Ego, so I poured it on my pancakes. Now, now I'm actually kind of mad at Ego. You know, uh, all the obesity that you have caused in America. Now you're trying to get you went from obesity now to liver damage. How shameful of you! Attack! Attack! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, you want to read about Netflix, Cleve? Well, call off your plot to loot the Netflix DVD library. The streamer is happy to send you a copy or 10 of the red envelope DVDs that kicked off this media reign. In the wake of co-CEO Ted Sarandos announcing the shutdown of the company's physical media program, currently scheduled for September 26, Netflix has come up with a semi-solution for offloading their collection. In an email sent to DVD subscribers today, Netflix wrote, after 25 years of movies in the mail, we're approaching the end of our final season. Let's have some fun for our finale. That fun appears to be finding up to 10 extra discs in your order if you choose to opt out for the surprise by August. So basically you get 10 free DVDs with the subscription that's closing for Netflix. So Netflix is shutting down. 
or just no. their DVD services. Yeah, their their physical. Their physical okay. services, and they're going all digital. Yeah, because uh, originally that's how Netflix started. Was you would mail, you would get mailed in copies of DVDs and stuff, and then you would just watch them, then send them back, and then they moved to streaming, and now they're getting rid of all their, I guess, just their inventory. So we did it. So I'll see what ten free D and. Here's the cold killing part. I got at least over a thousand DVDs sitting in my shed in a tote. Like I bought a tote just to put the DVDs in and I'm getting 10 free more little packages for no reason, you know, just to see what they are so they can go sit inside the closet inside in the, the tote. tote. And I what's weird about that is what do you do with DVDs? You everything DVDs will make a comeback like the record did or no, is it going to be, be like the cassette where like only a certain people fuck with cassettes? Like, Yeah, I think that's what it's going to turn out to be because it's like it comes from an era where like, you know, the the movie reel is a very sought after thing in Hollywood, for example. And then from the movie reel, you know, it went to the, the VH tape, like the VHS tapes. And then from those tapes where they keep, you know, like the um, cassette tapes yeah that transferring from that to floppy disk which you never hear of floppy disk anymore no nope. and then from the floppy disk that's when the cd rom and dvd started making their transitions to mp3s yeah so it's like once the cd figured out the way to make smaller files with an mp3 format they created the device called the flash drive which i still use today to like store some media and um from like flash drives you eventually went off to bigger hardware like the terabytes and the gigabytes and or smaller the sims card or even the sim yeah, card because that's what we use for the p4 is the sims card and yeah. i take it out the p4 little sims card which is basically just a little floppy disk it's just a mini floppy disk yeah. for your phone it's like all phones use the sim that's card. crazy i never even thought about it in that in that texture you know just like because a little mini floppy yep it's just a mini floppy disk for your phone it, it saves so much in such a small amount of space that's crazy how much how much data can be saved in just a little area and just so much with technology in itself and it's i know we've touched on it before but it's crazy to think that at one time yes yeah, there was no internet there was no there was phones on the wall like i remember my grandma had a rotary phone is that what you call it where you yeah, you, you, you dial have it to on spin the wheel. It? Yeah, that's a rotary phone. Man, that shit was so wild. I didn't even know how to use it. You know, and I bet you kids nowadays don't even know how to use, would know how to use a payphone or something if they ran across it. Right. If their payphones even it still exist, which I think they taken out payphones a long time ago since the cell phone, because everybody has a cell phone, even though like a throwaway cell phone, flip phone. I remember when the pager was like you had a pager, you were the shit. <laughs> But yeah, or like, you thought you were the shit, at least. Yeah, not to get too far off of the topic, but yeah, just software engineering in general, you know, just like the way that you can convert a file, you can make it larger or smaller. Yeah. You could change it from an audio to a video format. And just like the different ways of like how that form of engineering has skyrocketed over like the last 20 years and it's continuously growing because... I guess what the future is leading to, like with more simulations, more AI present, and they're trying to figure out how to simulate some things that people can't cohesively think on a regular basis Yeah. due to emotions and other things that kind of deter our thoughts. But um, a lot of what help that would help that is just for people proper dieting yeah. to kind of like put a spin on that topic, you know, you know, diet in the proper hill, vitamins, uh, herbal medicines, remedies, you know, all of that is essential for the body, especially in times like where it's really hot and you're using more water than normal. It can really have a, a great impact on the way a person thinks. I was reading um, on the news where like New Orleans, like it's at like an you know, the tourism usually around this time is high. It's the, it's the lowest it's ever been in all year, like just because of the heat. Like the humidity is too high. People can't go out during the day and enjoy themselves because the weather is like... You're getting cooked. It's increasingly hot. You're getting cooked like a big old gumbo pot. Getting 
It is. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know that about New Orleans about uh, tourism being down. That's yeah, crazy. tourism's it pretty kick, down. It kicked back up during football season. Uh, yeah, Saints, well, Saints fans. Uh, at least it'd be busy on Sundays out there. When is the Bayou Classic? Uh, I do not know. I think uh, it's in November, but yeah, usually when it cools up, down, people start coming out whenever it cools down. So, like, whenever the fall hits and the weather is pleasant, then, yeah, like, more people start to come out. And I don't blame them because it's too damn hot to do anything. Nope. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of cool stuff out there that uh, I think that in human, like, the way our culture is now we get disconnected from nature and forget about all the cool healing properties that some very common plants that grow in Louisiana or anywhere, you know? Um, and we have a few of them, uh, listed out and ready to talk about, but I encourage everybody to go out there to at least take a multivitamin, get some sunlight and, uh, put your feet on the ground yeah, too. Get your some bare exercise. feet on the ground, yeah, exercise. Yeah. Get some exercise. You know, they say exercise, like if you exercise and you get sleep, exercise increases your lifespan by three to five hours. <laughs> I'm getting plenty of that <laughs> five days, six days a week. <laughs> so yeah, it's like, you know, you gotta make sure you get your exercise and you eating your vitamins and, you know, processing and functioning and get off of the phone, like how to get a little bit connected with the world and your surroundings. Speaking of the phone, uh, you, everybody's phone has, uh, integrated app in it, in your settings where, especially on newer phones where you can set it, to record how, how much you use your phone. And I challenge everybody to do that and try to have them numbers down every week. Like, because it'll tell you, it'll uh, gauge you at one point, say you started this week. It'll gauge that as your base, right? Right. And then every week from there, it'd be like, okay, you used your phone an hour and 30 minutes more than you used it last week. Or you used it 45 minutes less this week. And I encourage everybody to do that, to put their phone down, pick up a book, walk outside, take your shoes off and your socks off and put your bare feet on the ground let it's called a uh, grounding or something a lot of people talk about it in like the spiritual chakra world but just your natural like touching mother earth is good go put your hand on a tree touch a, a bush or something it's because yeah. you, you're letting your energy flow with the earth too and to add to that if you cut your phone off for one hour a day that not only, you know, adds to everything that you just said, but it also saves your phone in the long run from having like errors and glitches and oh, like that's trash true. folders giving... because you're giving your phone an actual rest because our phones act as like a mini computer. You know, it's a machine too and it needs a break every now and again. So your uh, circuits won't short out as quick like how people's charger goes out. It's because they're charging their phone and actively using it versus cutting it yeah. off. Plugging it in, once it's done, unplug it, leave it, let it cool off, and when you're ready to use it, then cut it back on. A normal person can go without their phone for like two hours. So that's plenty of time to charge for an hour. It'll get fully charged. It won't do the thing where it shows up charged and then you use it for 30 minutes and you're thinking, damn, my battery was just full and now I've already lost 30% and I've only been watching videos. Because you're not giving the phone a damn break if you yep. cut it off and take those steps just a little bit at a time. If you're an addict, try for 30 minutes. That's crazy that uh, there is like people that have addiction with cell phones and media and stuff like that. It's crazy the human mind can get it. Human mind. Get, you can get addicted to anything if you just your mind your mind makes it an addiction. Uh, the human body is a weird mistress, but uh, let's talk about some plants that you can, uh, natural herbs that you can find in Louisiana, Cleve, if that's okay. Oh yeah, I'm with it. Uh, now, I'm going to have to go ahead and to apologize to the listeners out there because I will be butchering some of these words. And yes, I know you have Google and yes, I know I can put it in and listen to him say it but i can also correct it at the best of my ability look you want to start with the uh ground grounds old bush okay the grounds of bush or manglier not much is known about this plant outside of louisiana though it has been used for generations by native americans to quell chills fever congestion and other cold symptoms make a tea with the leaves to help with upper respiratory issues said and brewster 
also nothing that is a bitter taste. <clears throat> also noting that it has a bitter taste. The teas have been historically served with lemon or honey. The bush pops up rec in recently disturbed areas, so keep an eye out in overgrown pastures where it easily takes over. The August grounds of bush. I want to say I've seen those before. Like they grow out in like cow fields. Yeah. Well, but it looks like a tree, but it's just like an overgrown bush. But I didn't know you could like brew the leaves. I know uh, a lot of people know what horny, uh, horny goat weed is if they ever went to a gas station to buy a pill. Well, naturally grown in Louisiana is goat weed, known to pop up in roadside ditches in the spring. Goat weed is common, common and aromatic plant used for chills and fevers. Boiling the leaves of the plant to make a tea was a common method, although it was served cold. In the spring, goat weed begins popping up in the roadside ditches and fields of Louisiana. So, uh... Yeah, we surrounded by that goat weed. I'm going to take a quick second to see what the goat weed actually looks like because I'm at a loss. Yeah, take your time. I pretty, oh, it looks like a vine. Uh, It's a little purple plant with the purple leaves and stuff. It's a vine. Yeah, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, it's like a vine. Oh, look, here we go. Horny goat weed right off the top. Yeah. yeah the pills. Get them pills. Man. But, hey, man, if it works, it works. Yeah, it could so, get boofed up boy, so, with the pills. So, apparently, <laughs> this plant is known. That's why they sell it in stores, because it has the same properties or alleged the same properties as Viagra. Yep. And it's way better for you, because Viagra is terrible for your heart. Uh, if No one's ever told y'all that, but, like, them, like the medically prescribed penis enhancement pills are terrible for men's heart they because you take an old heart and you try to send all that you try to take an old heart and send all that blood <laughs> fucking do it <laughs> that's just asking for a heart attack they just want another cardiac hey, they're gonna patient. die happy that's all i know they're gonna die hard or don't <laughs> die at all <laughs> <laughs> You said die hard. Yeah, you gonna die hard or don't die at all. <laughs> all right. Uh, Moving on. Okay, so we got this elderberry here. You'll find elderberry in all health food stores today. But this plant has been long used in Louisiana to reduce cold symptoms as well as boost the immune system. Elderberry is high in vitamin C said early we use local honey and combine with we combine that with other herbs that are antibacterial and antiviral these berries are collected when ripe usually in the late summer and boiled in water to make a syrup as it cools adding honey thickens the mixture and provides other medicinal properties yeah, you talking about them gummies i like i i would be taking them but they're so expensive like i feel like I've plateaued on the elderberry because I don't never really get sick. Like I, I cannot tell you. There's only been, besides Pizza Hut trying to kill me that one time. There's only been like two times in the last like three years, three or four years. I got sick, sick. Yeah, they they got them in like uh the like they use for energy, but they often pop up on roadsides, abandoned fields, and the edges of forests. These plants boast white flowers in the late summer that produce dark purple berries. Yeah, I've seen elderberries before, and I've eaten them wild, and they have like a distinct taste. They're not too bitter, but you know they they have like a sweet bitterness to them. But they do give you energy, like like it says, high in vitamin C. So, you know, it's like if you're out in the wild, if you're on a hiking trip, if you're, um, you know, like again, like on the edge of a field. I've mostly seen them by the abandoned fields and like the edge of forest lines, like where they keep the livestock. I've seen them grow like along the tree lines of those. Sometimes on rare occasions, like you, you may find an elderberry bush in a forest, but a lot of the times that's because like animal trackings and and the elderberries are different than blackberries too, right? Correct. Because they're more circular, right? They're more whole. And right. Blackberries yeah. got all the little yeah. The blackberries got like the little the little smaller grapes, and they grow on a uh, bush. Yeah, their their fruit. Their fruit's kind of like a strawberry, right? What, it, the blackberry? Yeah, it looks yeah, more like a strawberry. It's like a strawberry. 
All right, I got some uh something cool that I just really found out. Okay, uh the next one on the list is Coral Bean, aka known as Mamu. Mamu. Not not even playing. So yep. perhaps the most well known of Louisiana medical plants, the coral bean, is ooh ubiquitously u- ubiquitously known in Acadiana as the Mamu. Each spring, the plant produces a beautiful crimson flower with red beans that emerge from pods. The beans were typically boiled to make tea to treat cold, the flu, bronchitis, and whooping cough. Uh. A.K.A. <laughs> that call. Okay, so it's uh, recommended three, five, or seven beans, a prescription that changed depending on who was taking it. A perennial, mm-hmm. the mamu grows in sand, uh, sh- shady or clay soils and is drought resistant. So if I'm guessing mamu is named after a medical plant. Because yep. I would assume that would be the right answer, right? Yeah, Mamu is named after, after the, the coral, coral bean. bean. That, I did not know that. And that was fun. <laughs> And I fucked that all up. But that's still cool information. I was looking for... I need, to, I need to remember what I put on the sound pad. Yes, sir. But yeah, we have um, another herb known as the lizard tail. And this plant is found in shady wet areas across Louisiana swamps. The leaves, roots, and flowers all have anti-inflammatory properties. Historically, a tea for teething babies was made from the stems, roots, and leaves, but also used to treat upset stomach. Due to the plant's sedative properties, another folk remedied into making a poultice for wounds. Look for lizard's tail in shaded swampy areas where it will still grow in clusters. Huh, do you so do you have an idea imagery wise what a lizard tail looks like? If I had to guess, like I, I kinda wanna confirm it like on what it looks like, but if I had to guess I would think maybe similar to like an aloe vera like an aloe vera plant. Uh maybe. look, so uh it grows on a, a bush, right? Yeah. And it has a stem that comes out of it that makes small little white flowers around it and it has petals you know like oh okay all right all right like what the uh, i would have never the hummingbird was, suck on yeah i would have never guessed that's what it looked like and what and what you do you boil the leaves on this one yeah or you, you take one, the whole plant on this yeah, one it say it's uh the leaves roots and flowers all have inflammatory properties so yeah you would use the whole plant and yeah you would um yeah, it says it's a tea. So yeah, you would brew it as a tea, and it's uh, used for teething babies, and it also treats upset stomach, and it also has sedative properties, meaning probably, um, you know, whenever you add it to a wound, like if you have a cut and you use it like as an antiseptic or some type of yeah. uh, a natural medicine to kind of soothe the uh, pain, that's what it would be used for. Okay, so uh, to describe the plant a little bit better for the listeners, okay, the influence sense is usually six to eight inches long. That's that thing I'm talking about, the big white thing. Yeah. And they call it the lizard tail because the way it folds over. And uh, the leaves on it are, hold up, where was it? The leaves are usually harp-shaped uh, or arrow-shaped or lance-shaped and are arranged Alternatively to the stem, where the leaves are crushed and released as a citrus or saff- saffras aroma. Oh, like the sassafras? The sassafras aroma. Yeah, Jacoby was trying to get us to talk about uh, the sassafras plant a little bit on this episode, which I can look it up in, in a All second, right. some information after we read uh, uh, the so heat resistance. Them are, uh, that list right there, uh, everybody out there, is a list of herbs that grow indigenously in Louisiana. And if y'all ain't check, uh, checked it out yet, check out Third Coast Podcast on 5000w's.thirdcoastpodcast.com on all major streaming platforms, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, at Third Coast Podcast Productions at YouTube.com. And make sure that if y'all ain't bought them yet, to go out and buy tickets to Fet Devoid 2023. 
you know, your boys will be out there, me and Cleve, interviewing people. We have notched in, for sure, 11 interviews. And recently we had added uh, Miss Pretty, uh, Pretty Nasty is going to join us on the show. So that's pretty cool. That's dope. Um, I don't know. A uh, whole bunch of cool stuff going on. We're going to have merch out there. So make sure y'all come out, buy a t-shirt, get some free merch. We got some matchbooks that just came in. That So if y'all need, you know, a little light source to light a cigarette or something up at FET, make sure you stop by. We're going to have some koozies and just come chat with us, you know. We're always down, obviously, for a conversation. But, uh, yeah, um, so we're going to tackle this list. If you have a garden, uh, a garden out there, you want to start a, like a herb garden or something, and especially since, you know, the heat is nice and lengthy. Uh, thank you, El Nino. These are eight <laughs> herbs that thrive in Louisiana heat. And I'm going to start, start it off with basil. Basil is the star of the summer herb garden. Because you can't kill it. Most edible basils are cavalaries of uh, species of... Cultivars? Uh, uh, cultivars of the species of... Golly! Oakland. That's Basilean. the scientific, yeah, it's the scientific the, name for The basil. smooth, uh, leafy types of basil that can grow two to three feet tall are best known for their culinary uh, uses and is typically called sweet basil. And me personally, when I cook, I don't use a lot of fresh basil or whatever, but I do like the way it smells when you start chopping it up. Right, yeah. There's been times where I bought the organic basil and just chopped it up just to smell it. Like it was like a dollar or something. I just chopped it up while I was cooking something and just just to smell yeah, just it to that get makes that sense. aroma. I don't know. Uh, man, you got to get it in your body though, man. Get more benefits just from smelling it. And then another leaf that's uh pretty heat resistant is uh the bay leaf, or Laura Snobles goes by a variety of names in our area, including bay tree, bay leaf, true bay, and French bay. An evergreen shrub, a small tree that may grow to be 10 feet tall, is one of the indispensable herbs for Louisiana cu cuisine. Plants in pots or in well-drained sunny areas. <clears throat> uh, yeah. The bay leaf, uh, I always use it when I'm making gumbo. For sure. That's like my yeah, go-to. Bay leaf is like for or soups, bullion gumbo, chicken, chickens, um, even like Anything you would cook like in a uh like a beef broth. Yeah. Like I'll use bay leaf like with a like beef cube. Like whatever meat may, may be like chuck or sirloin. With like some sausage, some other yeah. vegetables. Like to make it like a like a red and brown gravy. Yeah. Yeah, I add something like that. But uh combined with that, you also have lemongrass. And it's grown for its richly lemon flavored stems. It forms a large clump over time, about three feet tall and wide, plant in a sunny location. Lemongrass may freeze in the winter, but it's reliably root hardy. Okay, so uh, with lemongrass, I actually have a little information about that. And they, they're totally right. You can, uh, lemongrass smells wonderful yes it does and a lot of people plant it around their house because when the ble breeze blows it blow bro blows that smell around but you can eat it too you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. it it, but it is it it does grow grow in a clump and say like you're gardening it right and what i would suggest is in the fall time you want to give it a hard cut like cut it almost all the way to the bottom right and then cover it up like if it frosts or whatever, but it roots hard into because we grew them in pots in the nursery. Yeah, you will cut them down in the fall, like right in fall, early winter, and then if like hard frost comes, try to cover them with something light. Right. But they come, they come back up. They they're, yeah, they they're shake resilient. Back whenever, yeah, they're resilient plant. And I also know that they keep the mosquitoes away. Yeah. Yeah. So like, if you live like in the wooded areas like we do, or if you live in an area where mosquitoes are like pretty active, like you plant some of that around your house, it'll definitely keep them away. Uh, there was another. There's a. What's that? I can't think of that other mosquito plant now. We used to call it a mosquito plant, and uh, when I worked at the nursery, and 
There's, you know, you don't have to put chemicals in the air to get rid of some pests. Is it pests. Uh, the eucalyptus? It's something. I'm about to Google it now. I know you. Gonna... I know eucalyptus keeps it away, like the shit that they put in a uh, Vicks vapor rub, like whatever the main ingredient is. I think it is eucalyptus, but yeah, it's like that keeps them away. Lemongrass keeps them away. A yellow light will keep them away. I got uh, a small list. Uh, apparently, mint. Cat, catnip is what it's called. Oh, catnip? Yeah, uh, mint, catnip, lemongrass, lemon balm, marigolds, garlic, uh, scented geraniums, lemon thyme, bees balm, fl uh, floss flower, lantana, uh, bandana lantana are good plants to grow. They're hard to kill. Sage, eucalyptus, thyme, American beauty berry, uh, rosemary brilliant basil so there's a there's a few plants out there you can plant around your house you know you don't have to get all them chemicals pumped into the air like say like you have a pool or you have like a patio area plant you a couple of these and a lot of these plants are easy to easy to find <laughs> easy to grow low maintenance and you can you know, and then a lot of them just look cool too. They put little flowers on and stuff. So next time you're out there, instead of spraying the off, think about maybe you can give back to the environment too. You know, you plant these plants; they're gonna help the bugs. It's gonna help the uh, soil, yeah, help, soul, help the air, air quality, air quality, and the entire ecosystem that is fucked up right now because people just get away from these things you know they lose touch with nature and because they lose touch with nature nature loses touch of us you, okay <laughs> one one small question this okay. is so off topic but i gotta ask right now do you think that we're covering the world with more concrete and like buildings and stuff instead of let, letting natural foliage happen so that contributes to the heat of the planet too because it's more concrete than this soil. There's more buildings than there are trees. There's more nuclear power plants than there are oh, yeah, rainforests. Absolutely. absolutely. Okay. We, I'm sorry. Nah, but yeah, the list goes on. But like some of the uh, herbs that you mentioned about planting is on the list, like the uh, lemon balm, which I was going to ask if you could. Uh, uh, tell the audience a little bit about the lemon balm. Another lemon scented herb is lemon balm. It's related to and resembles the mints, but its foliage has an intense lemony aroma, easy to grow and reliable and full sun to part shade. Um, lemon balm is a great plant to plant in your gardens. When mosquitoes bother, uh, bother you, rub a little lemon balm on your arms or legs to help keep them away. Yep. And I worked at the nursery and that is a true fact i used to because we used to move the plants right and right i used to go walk through them plants if the mosquitoes were bad that day or it's been raining and it's hot or whatever i would walk rain <laughs> that that exists anyways um i would walk through the lemon balm and some of the mosquito plants and stuff and walk through them uh centronella plant is what it's called okay th that's what they didn't have on there that's what we were thinking about the main ingredient centronella and uh, I would walk through them plants when the mosquitoes were bad, and it works. It really does. Um, so, yeah, if y'all have a mosquito problem, there's plenty of uh, natural things out there to help y'all with that. Yeah, especially in the native area. Yeah, that's just the heat resistant that thrive, thrive here in Louisiana. Uh, you won't. Uh, Mexican uh, tangaroon. Yeah. The. Uh, Oh, the Mexican tarragon. A tarragon. It's native to uh, it's native to Mexico and Guatemala, and loves the heat and humidity, providing abundance of leaves for cooking all summer long. The flavors are remarkably similar to the French version of it, but it's more intense, so you should cook it less. Uh, this reliable perennial grows in sunny spots and goes dormant when winter comes cool yeah so like in i've never even heard like, of that plant before uh, the mexican tarragon never heard of it 
Yeah, you got to so, use less. Might have of to grow it. it though. Yeah, you got to use less of it. Kind of reminds me of the next one on the list. You got the Mexican oregano, which doesn't mind the heat too much. It can be planted now and will produce during the summer. But Mexican oregano has an intense oregano flavor that is so attractive. This herb makes an attractive small woody shrub with small bright green leaves. In early summer, it's covered with a profusion of tubular flowers in the shades of pale lilac and lavender. Oh, I know what those are. Yeah, uh, yep, yeah, I've, I've seen that. Leaves. That's pretty. Uh, garlic chives. Um, Ooh, tasticles. We used to. Oh, and they moving them, moving them garlic chives. You will smell like garlic. Like you would think that you rolled around in garlic all day if you if you move some of these plants. Okay, the garlic chives grow little during the summer, preferably to hunker down and soak uh soak until the weather cools. Garlic chives on the other hand uh, that's regular chives, but garlic chives on the other hand don't mind the summer heat at all. Large and more robust than chives, the flavor is somewhat milder but it will do in a pinch. Garlic chives produce stalks with round clusters of white flowers that are attractive and edible. Deadhead to remove the fade flowers and prevent seed form formation as this plant self seeds freely. Huh? Hold up. It just seeds itself? I think that's what it just said. <laughs> it's, uh, it's asexual. This evergreen perennial uh, herb is attractive year-round, easy to grow, and a great addition to your herb garden. Because you know, what better if you can just seed yourself? Right, yeah. Like Once it dies, it's just going to plant itself again and go dormant. And whenever the season is ready, it's just you know going to sprout again. We used to have to plant them, them uh, the... Uh, Garlic chives had their own little uh, cut that we had planted them on, and I I never understood why they were by themselves. If they were such an easy plant to take, now it makes That's sense. That's why, because Cause they, if they're self seeding and the wind blows, it throws it on dirt in another pot. It's going to grow that pl that plant and it, mm -hmm. and not if it's maybe stronger. You know, I never knew that. Yeah, it's cool when you realize something, and the listeners probably is like, "What the hell is Joe talking about right now?" <laughs> And then you might have that one listener that's like, dude, how could you not think about the seeds getting into the other pot? <laughs> yeah, that's for the true gardener. And uh, speaking of seeds, the sesame is easily grown from seeds on upright plants that reach about three feet. This warm season annual is best planted from seeds in May or early June, so you might still sneak in a crop. I didn't think sesame seeds grew here. And then, for last but not least, we got the sweet annie. It's not a culinary herb, but it's wonderfully it's wonderfully fragrant. The aroma is rich, sharp, and clean, and is retained for an amazingly long time after the foliage is cut and dried. It's great for aromatic herb for crafts such as potpourri, sachets, and wreaths. Star seed of this warm seed of uh, this warm season annual herb. But the sweet Andy, yeah, I've heard of the sweet Andy, and I've seen it like in some ingredients, like whenever it comes to like the potpourri flowers, like that have lavender and lilac and ivory, and you know, it's like well, you could make potpourri just out of just about anything. Yeah, take a little bit of rosewood, you know, uh, like shed it down real fine, real nice. But um, but yeah, that, that's a that's definitely um one that wasn't on the list again that Jacoby had mentioned about was sassafras. And if you give me a minute, sassafras is said to improve the urinary tract health, reduce symptoms of arthritis, it clears the skin and eyes, it treat it's a it's also used as a treatment of sprains. Reduced itching or swelling from bug bites or stings. It also includes a boost in immune health, improved circulation, and reduced symptoms of gout, which is a stomach bile overflowing. And it's just 
the green part of it is just like settled in on your stomach. Mm -hmm. It reduces that from happening. Sassafras is good in gumbo as well, too. Yeah. That's what uh, I always put that in gumbo. That's one of the key ingredients, in my opinion. Yeah, my pop had a sassafras tree in the backyard. It's still there. Really? Yeah, it's That's like cool. he um, yeah, he had it there for since I was a kid, basically. And um, he used to cut the wood off of it. He'll take the leaves. He'll like use it like for his herbal medicines. Like I can remember him making medicine at one point with it and like brewing the teas and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it's like uh, I never knew that some of those plants. I just grew around here naturally. Yeah, and not, and that's just what I could find, and I'm pretty sure I missed a whole bunch of them. And uh, so, if y'all have any, you know, listeners, make sure y'all give us a little bit of feedback and let us know about some plants we might have missed uh, along the way that could be very heat resistant and good for a herb garden, or and, just print, you know, just herbs in general. You know, it's like it's always a good topic to have whenever it includes about the health and wellness. And the conditions, and it also, you know, is geared towards, like, you know, earthly purposes and making it better. You know, mm -hmm. playing a little bit around your place, and you can see the, you can definitely see the improvements once it's cleaned up. Yeah, definitely. But I think we should take a little short break before yeah. we get off into the last half. Yep, getting to the ending, actually. Right? Yep. All righty. We'll be back. <laughs> and we're back uh from our quick little break and we're gonna dive into words of wisdom and i'm gonna go ahead and kick it off if that's okay cleve yeah go for it uh, my words of wisdom is even though something's on the shelf don't be afraid to pick it back up because i've been having a wonderful time relearning the trombone and it's actually helping my bass guitar skills out a lot um, and it's a fun process actually, cause I used to could do a whole bunch of cool things on it and read a whole bunch of good, you know, sheet music. And now I'm trying to relearn E flat, D, relearn reading music and stuff, but it's clicking though, you know, and I'm having, you know, I'm real excited for it. So, um, if you had like a past hobby or something you put away and you have an opportunity to grab it again, don't be afraid to reach out and grab it. Because I'm having a hell of a time um, setting up stuff to be a part of the alumni band, which I've mentioned before. And uh, just really excited about it. So that's my words of wisdom. Hey, that's dope. I like that. You know, for me, um, just with the way my schedule is, I was just say, um, love is the highest of virtues that should be kept between just people in general, you know, and it, it's not in a sense like love with relationships or, you know, intermarital relations like that. You know, love as a whole, like for people, for the animals, for the planet, for the things that we need to take into care. It's like when we share positive things, you know, good outcomes can always come from just someone giving a smile or just giving someone attention for their efforts when it's needed because... I don't know, though, though, people sometimes can be negative. And a lot of the time when we're trying to figure out when they're being negative, we need to find a source, and that comes with honesty. And I feel like love can overcome those things if people can learn how to express it. So yeah, right. it's it's a, definitely the highest virtue that goes for the men and women listening to all ears. So our uh, artist of the week hails from Lafayette, Louisiana. Their name is Void, and they uh, they were formed in Lafayette, Louisiana, in 2019 by the Davenport brothers Jackson and Logan. Void is a powerhouse five-piece thrash metal band. After going through many lineup changes in the earlier stages, the band finally settled on its current lineup in the summer of 2022 and has sent, since been tearing up the Gulf Coast, quickly gaining local and national attention. Void is one of the only young thrash metal emerging bands from the Louisiana metal scene. After a brief tour in the southern United States in October 22, 
they went into recording into a recording studio to make their debut album during the winter of 2023 slash 20 uh slash uh my bad 2022 slash 2023 void's music can be described as catchy in your face riffs rippling duet leads melodic harmonies tasteful bass lines fast and precise drumming and vocals that would transport you back to 1987 Void's brand new 10 track debut album Horrors of Reality is out now. Uh, make sure, uh, big shout out to Jason on vocals, Gabe on lead guitar, Logan on bass guitar, Alex on lead guitar, and Aaron on drums. And uh, yeah, make sure y'all uh, check out their music and make sure y'all buy tickets to Fet the Void 2023 where y'all can see Void and make sure to check up the upcoming interview that we have lined up with them at the event. But for Third Coast Podcast, I'm Joe. What it do, Gators?